So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, tangential acceleration and tangential component. Tangential acceleration. Now, when we did uniform circular motion last year, we never had any tangential acceleration. Last year in physics, all we dealt with typically is uniform circular motion. Going around in a circle, it is accelerating, but it's not changing speed. Now, here's what I want to do, okay? If I did this, is it now changing speed? Yes. Now, question, is it still accelerating towards the center? Thumb up if yes, thumb down if no. Yeah, it still is doing that. That's one of the components. But now it's got another component of acceleration. Typically, when something's moving in a circle, just like instead of x and y, we got to give it two components. But moving in a circle, x and y doesn't always help us. The two components are this way we call radial. Why do we call this way, and it could be towards the center or out from the center, why do we call that direction radial? It's like parallel with a radius. It's radial. What are we going to call the direction perpendicular to the radius? The tangential direction. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spin this around. I want you guys to point in the direction of the tangential acceleration. Go ahead and point in that direction. Which way is it speeding up tangentially? And I, I'll need you to do that because it is... Uh, when it's right up here at the very top, which way is it accelerating tangentially? If you said that away, you'd be right. So it's accelerating. Now, that stops when I stop pushing it, but as long as I keep spinning it faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, it's got two components of acceleration. So here's what we got. Here's our circle. And here's our object. Let's look at it when it's at the top. So we've got a couple different uh, parts of the motion here. Let's look at the velocity is this way. That's the speed. Now, its acceleration, or one component of it, is this way. I'm going to draw it right here. That I'm going to label A sub T. It's accelerating tangentially. And for its motion around the circle, this tangential acceleration works just like any other kinematic variable. In other words, if you want to find out how far it's gone around the circle, uh, I'm going to use uh, the S symbol for arc length. S final equals S naught plus V naught tangential T plus one half What's the last term in this uh, relationship? A tangential times t squared. Now, careful here. That t stands for tangential. This t is the time. You can do this for motion going around a circle because it's always going around the circle only on that path. You cannot do the same thing for centripetal acceleration. It is not true that, uh, uh, that uh, x centripetal is equal to x naught centripetal plus v naught centripetal times acceleration, one-half acceleration centripetal t squared, because what is the displacement centripetally towards the center? Something's going around in a circle. How far is it getting closer to the center? Or like, is it getting closer to the center? It's not. You, kinematics doesn't work for that. It will work for this as long as you're talking about motion around that circle, but that's the only time it'll work. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that, yes, that'll work for motion around a circle. The other part of this thing that we got to realize, though, is here's my question to you. Is this accelerating radially when it's going around in the circle and speeding up? Is it accelerating radially? Thumb up if yes, thumb down if no. Is there any acceleration parallel to a radius? Yeah, there still is. Is it a constant magnitude like it is in uniform circular motion? Is it a constant magnitude? It's not. What's happening to the magnitude as this spins up, is how I call it, is accelerating angularly. What's happening to the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration? 
it's increasing. It is increasing. But is it still going to be equal to, at any instant, v squared at that instant over r? Yeah. Yes, it is. The centripetal component will be equal to still v squared over r. So I'm just going to draw in a centripetal component here of acceleration. This is going to be ac, and it still will equal v squared over r for that instant. It will be. But when you look at this, you realize that, and this is one of the one of the quick quiz questions that some people were getting wrong. What is the actual direction of acceleration here? I want you all to point in that direction. I've got two components. What's the actual direction of acceleration? So I'm going to use uh, a, let's use blue for this. I already used it. Let's use orange. It's going to be along this way. Now, when you add vectors, do you want to add them uh, Pin the tail on the head or pin the tail on the tail? No. Tail on the head. So I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to uh, move this one over there because that's, whoops, because that's where it should be if I'm going to add the two. There's, there's AC again. I just rewrote it. And now I'm going to draw the sum of those two, which is this way. Wrong color. Sum of those two is like this. That is the centrip, not the centripetal, that is the net acceleration. It's accelerating like that because it's accelerating centripetally and it's accelerating tangentially. 